and we are going to do this last sermon um, as we focus on this year. This year's theme is Faith Walkers Focused on Finding Out More About God. And so our sermon for today comes from Exodus chapter 25. In fact, we're going to read a couple of verses, <clears throat> but I need us to go ahead and get situated on Exodus chapter 25, beginning at verse 1. Exodus chapter 25, beginning at verse 1. And it reads like this, Exodus chapter 25, beginning at verse number one, begins like this. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the oh, offering for oh. which you shall take from God. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and the stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. That's Exodus 25. Jump with me real fast to Exodus number 35. Exodus 35. So Exodus 25 is God talking to Moses. Exodus 35, verse four, Moses speaks to the people. It says, Moses spoke, to all the congregation of the children of Israel saying, this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, take from you, among you, an offering to the Lord, whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to set in the ephod and in the breastplate, all right? Jump to 20, verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing and they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle and for its service and for the holy garments. They came both men and women, as many as had a willing heart and brought earrings and nose rings, rings and necklaces, all jewelry of gold, that is, every man who made an offering of gold to the Lord and every man with whom was found blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine linen, goat's head, red skins of rams and badger skins brought them. Everyone who offered an offering of silver and bronze brought the Lord's offering. And everyone who was found acacia wood for the work of the service brought it. All the women who were gifted artisans spun yarn with their hands and they brought what they had spun of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. And all the women whose heart was stirred with wisdom spun yarn of goat's hair. The rulers brought onyx stones and the stones to be set in the ephod and the breastplates and spices and oils for the light, for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord, all the men and women whose heart was willing to bring the material of all kind of work which the Lord by the hand of Moses had commanded to be done. Jump over one more chapter, hold on. Chapter 36, beginning at verse three. And they received from Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of making the sanctuary. So they continued bringing it to him, a free will offering every morning. And the craftsmen who were doing the work came from the work he was doing 
And they said to Moses, this people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded us to do. So Moses, verse 6, chapter 36, gave a commandment and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing for the material they had was sufficient for all the work to be done, indeed too much. I, I wanna preach. I know that's a long passage, a long pericope, but I wanna preach today from the thought, we need you to survive. We need you to survive. Let's pray. God is preaching time. Your people need to hear your voice. And God, as we make an appeal, God, as we make a reminder of the expectation that you have for us, as, as we broach this subject of giving and the relationship between the gifts of the believer and the church, God, we pray that open hearts, open ears, and open minds are receptive to your word. And God, we pray also that the evidence of their receipt, the evidence of the fact that they receive the word is that there is a response. So God, we love you and praise you and celebrate you in Jesus' name, amen. We need you to survive. We had an amazing meeting this week with our board. We had to call an executive board meeting. And the reason we had to call the executive board meeting is because for the first time since I've been here, um, we actually had to be a little late on the rent. We had to be late on the rent because we have been experiencing a reduction in giving and a reduction in gifts. We did a comparison between 2021 and 2022. And what we found was that several of the people who gave in 2021 in January and February have not given yet in 2022. And it could be easy to say that we have some members that are no longer with us from then, but God has been faithful and replaced those members with new members who have been given. But we also noticed that, yeah, that's a shout, Bowman. <laughs> that's a shout. The fact that God replaced those who were removed and they have been given. But the other reality is that there are those who never left. There are those who have not not been in service, who have not not been in faith school, who have not not been in Thirsty Thursdays, but yet they have not given. And I think a lot of times we forget a crucial piece of information. And it's one of my points, but I'll say it in the introduction, the church is not self-sustaining. In other words, the church does nothing in itself to sustain. The church is completely reliant on the gift of those, the gifts of those who attend the church. If the church, if no one gives, the lights will be cut off. If no one gives, the water will be shut off. If no one gives, there will be a, a, a note on the door and, and the, the owners of the building will come in and remove the articles from it and put it in the parking lot. If no one gets that, it, it's the same way in your personal life, right? If you don't pay the rent, you're going to come home one day and you think your landlord don't bother you, but I guarantee you somebody, somebody going to be walking around with your coat on. How'd you get my coat? Because the landlord put my coat in the parking lot, right? <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you never experienced that. I remember driving through neighborhoods and picking up, and I ain't picking up, but and, and looking at plates and, and, and refrigerators on the side of the road because the landlord removed them. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so here's something amazing that this text talks about. This is God, right? 
Now, you got to understand why this is so important. God, in chapter 25, is telling Moses that he needs an offering to create this tabernacle. Now, now don't get it twisted, right? Because this is God. God who two books before in Genesis created heaven and earth with nothing. He he heaven and earth di didn't have to ask for anything. But he didn't want to create a tabernacle, Barah. He wanted the people to build a tabernacle, to invest. Because God wanted to see if the people saw the tabernacle as important or if the people saw God's request as important as God did. So, 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 so God asks Moses, and if you read it, it really ain't no ask. God instructs Moses to tell the people to bring an offering. Moses then goes, tells the people what God said, and the people bring an offering. At the end of the story, there's more than enough for the building of the tabernacle. Now, listen, I, I know. We're going gonna, we're gonna, to gonna wrestle with this today because the reality is God is asking us to step up and do what we need to do to make sure that God's place is preserved, right? God, God, God is asking us. Let, let, let me, let me, let me so, so, so the question, listen, we're going to wrestle with this real fast and, and, and I'm almost done right before I even start, because I'm almost done, but, but it's, it's just important to know, well, how is our giving essential to the survival of the church? Our giving is essential. Here, here's the first way, because God's request should be the only real reason to give, right? God's request. Who's asking? God is asking. Now, now you got to understand um, why this is so important, because this is God asking. God speaks to Moses, and when Moses speaks to the people, Moses says in chapter 35 that this is the request of God. Now, if you understand where we are in this Exodus narrative, the people in verse chapter 24 have just pledged their allegiance to be completely dependent on God. They have just said that they're going to believe everything God says, they're going to do everything God commands, and they have just made a covenant with the Lord, and God says, listen, bring me an offering. Now, now, also understand, oh my God, oh my God, because 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 th this is so amazing because God says this, but God doesn't, God is realistic in what God asks. Look at what God asks. He, he doesn't ask for everything. He's specific in what God asks for. Gold, silver, bronze, red, purple, I mean, blue, purple, scarlet thread, linen, red badger skin. Onyx, other listen. God is specific. Woo! I'm trying not to run. God don't want it, even though it all is God's. God don't ask for it all. God is deliberate about what God asks. <laughs> God could have said, "Just bring me everything." Oh, okay, okay. M maybe you ain't shouting. I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can make a shout. Do you realize who he's talking to? He's talking to the children of Israel. If you don't, a couple months ago, the children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. <laughs> slaves don't have nothing. But before they left, God allowed them, God pricked the hearts of the Egyptians to release them wealth. Oh, God, okay, I'm ahead of myself, and I may not get to everything I want to say, but let me just say this. God knows what they have because God allowed the Egyptians to release it to them. Oh, man. OK. 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 Listen, listen. God knows what you're capable of giving because God is the one that allowed you to be able to have it in the first place. OK. OK. God gave you the wealth. God gave you the money. And God doesn't ask for it all. God, listen, God ain't asked for no yellow string. God ain't asked for no green string. God ain't asked for no pink string. God was specific in blue, red, and, 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 and blue. Scarlet, one other color, I forgot. But God was purple, 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 right? God, God was specific, right? 
Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, so, so just because God asked, right? Here's the second reason. Because our willingness to partner is a sign of praise for how God has provided. I got ahead of myself. But every time we give, every time we give to God, we're praising God because God is allowing us to partner. I, 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 wish, I, wish, I wish we could go to Africa. If you were ever to go to Africa and there was a clip, a meme, a, a video that used to come on about how they danced on the way to the giving, to the offering pan. They celebrated on the way to the offering pan. Why? Because they realized that this right here, I didn't deserve. Oh God, listen, th this money in the bank, I didn't deserve. In fact, if God would have had it another way, I would have been too sick to work. I would have never made the time necessary to qualify for the check being cut. But because God spared my life, because God let me show up to work every day, because God allowed me to, to, to put the time in and the, the place I worked had money to cut me a check. Listen, I'm going to praise God all the way to the offering pain. Every time you give, it's a praise. See, maybe what has happened is we've become disconnected from our true need of God to attain what we've had. It's only by God's grace that we were able to get the degrees. It's only by God's grace that out of the thousands of applications that went into the job, yours was selected to be interviewed and yours was even narrowed down in the second interview and that you actually got called. It's only by God's grace that there are some moments you were late and should have been fired, but God allowed the boss to turn the other way when you punched in. There is only by God's grace and as a result, you should want to give, to be a partner. Listen, I need you to understand how serious God, again, God doesn't need money. God doesn't need resource, but God is extending an invitation for partnership. Part of what giving is, is giving is an opportunity to demonstrate to God's your trust. We, we get hung up on the 10%. We get hung up on, on, on taxes. We get hung up on all that. But here's the reality. To be honest, the math doesn't even add up for it to all work in your budget. Right? To be honest, you could be the best mathematician and best saver and, and most resilient financial planner but stuff can come up, but it's by God's great. God is the provider, right? And God honors your 10%. God honors your seed and your offering in such a way that manifests beyond belief. There are things we were able to, listen, there was a testimony. There was a, listen, there was a testimony on Thursday night and I don't want to give their testimony, but they gave testimony about how, and Malachi talks about it the rebuking of the devourer. See, the rebuking, the rebuking of the devourer is the idea that, that God keeps your pockets from spilling unnecessary coin, that things that normally would eat up, like the devourer, the locust, and the canker worm, and the palmer worm. But the testimony was given that a furnace that should have lasted 10 years lasted 14 years, and an and a air conditioner that should have lasted uh, five years lasted 20. I, I don't know the whole thing. I ain't got the math right. But when it lasted beyond. Hold on, watch this. And so now that the it's at the end of its time, and, and the couple that gave the testimony have been faithful tithers and cedars, and now they're in a position to where they're able to buy new, right? Because of faithful seeding, right? And you say, well, no, that, that just because they saved. No, can I tell you the Lord allowed for nothing to come up to eat up the saving? because of faithfulness. And I, I'll make you shout even greater. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to make you shout because when I looked, because, you know, I, I number crunch, what they sold last year and this year has doubled, right? In the month. Because again, I, I'm believing and I'm knowing and I'm trusting, right? That God honors, right? God provides. And this is a pray. Every time you give should be a praise. That, that, that's why you give for our tithe first, right? 
As soon as it hits, I tithe. Tithing there before I even send money to pay the bills, I tithe because I'm, God, thank you, it came. I know you said, we're well, supposed to come, right? I expect it to come. But do you think about how you panic when that first of the month, remember before we did electronic deposits and, and if the mailman was late, right? Used to come at 12, but didn't show up to three. You was calling your job and calling social security. No, no, but God's always on time. So as soon as it comes, I'm, I'm making my deposit. I'm making my tithe. Listen, here's the third thing. God asks. I to allow. I had to go get allow. God asks, after assessing what was needed, who has and who would give and not withhold? Woo God asks, after assessing what was needed, after assessing who has and who would give and not withhold. Who catch this? This is major. When God asks specifically in, in verses three through seven of chapter 25, it's before he even tells them he's going to build a tabernacle. He spends the next chapters talking about how he's going to use the material he's collected. I need you to read. You should have read already because we were reading Exodus a couple months ago, right? So you, you, you should already see that everything God asks for, he uses. Everything he asks for, gold he uses, bronze he uses in the sockets. The, 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 the scarlet and the purple and the blue, the linen he uses, right? The, 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 the acacia wood he uses. Everything he asks for, he uses. So, so he is very meticulous and only asking for what he needs. Guess this. Oh my God. He's not asking. Listen, he's not asking for, for random stuff that ain't going to be used. God is only asking for what he needs. And then he's asking based on who know who, who he knows has it, because the text we read in chapter 36 said, 35 says that everybody who has gold brought it. <laughs> everybody who had, listen, he asked it. He said, go home and pray about it. But remember, oh God, the people who didn't come were the people who didn't have what was on the list. But the people who came were the people who had what was on the list and didn't withhold. <laughs> Remember I told you, based on my, based on my uh, 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 analysis, some people who gave last year haven't given this year. God says, no, no, that's what's, ne that's what's missing in the completion of this task, what is being withheld. God says, listen, it, it, it has to be given, it has to be given. And the people that God had in mind, God knew they would release freely. They brought it. And it doesn't, look, read, read 35. It, it says that they brought earrings and nose rings. And it doesn't seem like a lot, right? Individually, it's not a lot. But collectively, it adds up to be a lot. But it's just individuals. You're just bringing your piece, right? Br bring what you have. Bring it, 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 bring it. God knows what you have. And God specifically listed what was needed. And look at this. When Moses stood before the people, repeating what God said, Moses doesn't alter the list. Ooh, catch it. Catch it. Moses says exactly what God said to him to ask for. Now, Moses didn't know who was going to bring. But God knew. Moses simply repeated what God said. Moses simply said, listen, go pray about it. And whoever has a willing spirit, come on and bring it. The text says that they brought everything, everything, everything. Everybody brought what they had to complete the list. Everybody who was moved and the people who were moved were the people who had what was needed to offer. Oh, God, listen, listen, I'm trying not to run. Um, um, uh, let, let, let me just put this in here, too, because I, I already talked about the self-sufficiency. Right? He, he, here's what's so amazing. Oh my God, this is, this is, Mr. Onward, this almost shouted me. This almost shouted me yesterday. Really, it hit me this morning, right after the prayer call. Chapter 25, God tells Moses to ask for these things. 
Moses is on the hill for 40 days and 40 nights. Chapter 35, Moses talks to the people. But remember what happened in chapter 32. In chapter 32, because Moses was gone for so long, Aaron melted down all the gold into a golden calf. So a lot of the gold was spent in this golden calf. Okay, okay. But notice God's request doesn't change in 35. <laughs> okay, listen, listen. In other words, God knew that essentially there was going to be some spending that took place in chapter 32. But it shouldn't, the spending that took place in 32 didn't, shouldn't have impacted, God didn't, God knew it wouldn't impact the giving that took place in 35 and 36. Okay, you, you, you missed it. Hold on, let me see if I say anything again. God already knows you're going to spend somewhere, right? But God, what God has asked should not impact your giving because your spending was already accounted in your giving. Oh, oh God, listen. God, that, God, oh, listen, y'all, 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 I'm, I'm trying not to run. God already, that's, God's only asking 10% for the tithe. If you give above that, right, offering sacrificial seed, but it shouldn't be impacted by what you spend because your spending is already counted in, should be. Now, again, that's part of budgeting, and sometimes we budget beyond what we can share and give, but remember the church is not self-sufficient, right? The, the church is not self-sufficient, right? And, and even the work that was done, because there were some artisans that was called up, the work that was done, right, was skilled labor, right? Understand that. Skilled labor that could have been considered in our modern day as in-kind donation, right? In-kind donation. But what, also, what we also don't see is there are some that did skills and gave. They served and gave. It doesn't mention it. Doesn't, doesn't differentiate, right? But there was still an ask. And those that had gave. Okay, okay, okay. Here's the next thing. Survival, we're talking about this idea of the church's survival, is based on the shared weight, shared willingness, and work of all those who support. Look, look at what verse 9 of chapter 25 says. Verse 9 of chapter 25. Verse 9 of chapter 25 says this. Verse 9 of chapter 25. There we go. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. In other words, in order for it to work, all the materials had to be given. All the laborers had to be in place. Everybody had to be willing because God was only receiving willing offerings. Understand that, that again, this, this Paul, Paul says it like this, and not giving begrudgingly or out of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. God, God wants your heart to be in the right place when you give. When you serve, when you use your skills, you're not doing it to be seen. You're doing it to show God and give God glory, right? So again, this, this idea that God knew, I mean, I'm just so amazed at the stewardship of God. God models stewardship because God asks specifically for what God needs and the people bring it. Now, I also wanted to shout in faith school, right? Because Minister Arnwood talked about when the, when the disciples went fishing and they brought the fish and when they showed up to where Jesus was, he was already cooking fish, right? <laughs> like, like he said, bring your fish. But by the time he got, they got to him on the shore, he was already cooking fish. And that goes back to what Ivan said earlier, it's about obedience. God, God speaking to Moses and saying, look, tell the people to bring it, is God operating as God? Woo! 
God, I'm trying to, when God operates as sovereign God, God doesn't have to ask. God commands, right? And, and, and maybe part of the problem is we've gotten so comfortable with God that we think God has to ask us and beg us and make requests of us. No, God is God. God tells Moses, bring it. Tell them to bring it. Right? Some, some of us gotten, we gotten so cool. We, we sing, I'm a friend of God. And we think, you know, that, that so, and sometimes God has to operate as God. And when God operates as God, God commands. Because God knows that the tabernacle is going to get built. God is giving the people a chance to participate. But he wants them to be willing. God wants them to see it as an honor, as an honor to be considered, to do the work, to bring the gift. It's an honor. Oh, man. It's an honor to sow. It's an honor to give and to see it manifest. It's an honor, and, 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 and maybe part of the problem is that Moses didn't relay the plan in totality to the people. And I, I understand that, right? I'm thinking about it now. Because God told it to Moses and then laid out what God was going to do with every piece that was collected. But Moses simply said, this is what God wants. And the people gave it. In fact, when I think about it, the people trusted Moses so much and trusted God so much that once they heard that's what God wanted, that's what they did. Not all of them, but those who had purposed in their heart. To be excited about the fact that God wasn't going to do it without me this time. Woo God. God did it without me when God created the world. God did it without me when God populated the earth. God did it without me when God parted the Red Sea. God did it without me when God dropped manna from heaven. God did it without me when God allowed quail to be on the floor. But this task, God wanted me to be a part of, and God included me. Oh, man, listen. I, 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 I don't even know if you, if, if you remember the old church. The old church when people used to buy a pew. Now, I know they took it out of context that they only want to sit in that pew, but back in the day, you used to buy, you used to sit in pews and you see this pew was donated in honor of, right? And what the psychology was, there was going to be a lasting place and legacy left because of my participation in the project. Now, some people brought their friends that see, that was my grandmama did right there. She bought that pew. So, so oh, oh, you see that room? My, my auntie gave the money for that room. That, that's flesh. But the reality is God is asking for participation to partner in a work that is so great. I, I'm done. I'm done. Here, here's the last thing. Creating this type of culture when the community feels comfortable contributing will provide the continual care of the church. When, when, when we create this type of culture, because what Exodus is, is not only a history book, but it can be applied to our right now. So the lesson I got from this is that we have to create a culture when God casts vision to the pastor and the pastor prevents, presents the vision to the people in the form of budget, in the form of dreams, in the form of ideas, in the form of plans that the people that hear the pastor's plan partner in the vision. That, that's really what we're seeking. We're seeking people who will partner. Now, I, I will say that based on our analysis, 29 people have partnered in this idea of tithes and offering, at least to the point where they're giving something. 29 people, 29 people have partnered in January and in February. Now, in 2021, it was 41 people. Now, again, that, that's great. But in order to be considered a quote-unquote tithing church, you would want to have more than 50% of the membership tithing. I'm a lowball our membership number and say we're at 63. 
If we're at 63 and 29% are tithing, 29 people are tithing, then that's preferably about 38% that have committed to tithing, right? But, but in order for us to truly do the work that is required, because let me tell you the other side of that. If we're struggling to pay the lease, then that means there's no other ministry work being done, right? That means some of the work that God has put on our hearts in order to get licenses and stuff for after-school programs and, 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 and this counseling center and, and, and some of the other things that God has placed on us, the weight on us to do, can't even be done. But we find out in the text in chapter 36 that when people started getting in the rhythm of giving, when people started getting in the rhythm of giving and they started bringing stuff in every day or as they got it, the text says that the artisans, the builders of the different areas all came to Moses and said, listen, man, your people caught the vision and they brought way more than we can do something with. Now, let me tell you why this is so powerful. Because what Moses could have done is say, oh, we got extra. We're going to build another something. But that ain't what God said. So that's not what Moses did. Moses cut off the giving. Again, it's stewardship. The reality is, is that if we had everybody tithing and giving, everybody then there would never be another request for anything extra because it has always been the belief that God has provided exactly what we need in the church. Let, let, let me shout you, because I know this is heavy, but let me shout you. I think based at the, at the meeting, the church meeting, I said that the tithes collected, tithes and offering collected was somewhere around 124,000, I think, 124,000. Let, let me tell you why that shouts. You ready to shout? Because if the tithe represents 10%, then that means as a church collective, the, 40, the 44 that gave or the 75 that tithe, that means there's a tithing base of $1.2 million in the church. That's a shout. Okay, y'all ain't shouting. Okay, okay, I, I got you. I, I, I'm shouting, right? That means that God has blessed us as a faith family, right? To be able to say that the total wealth of the church for those that gave is about 1.2 million, right? That's the shout. Now you, you weigh in the fact that everybody didn't give, everybody didn't tie 10%, some people just gave, but that still says a lot. So my prayer is constantly for the financial health of the church, that as we grow, right? Because look at what, what I'm hearing. As I hear these praise reports on Thursday, people are getting promotion. They're increasing by steps. They're getting new jobs. They're going into GS 15s and, and 13s. They're, they're elevating in life. And as God increases, we honor God by increasing our praise to God. So I'm believing as we, as we elevate, right, that I believe that our tithing base goes up. If, if 10 more people commit the tithing, that will take us to, to over 50%. How does that happen? That, that comes from us praying, God, please allow the people to trust you like they trusted Moses. Please, please allow the people to trust you like they trusted Moses and God and you back then. God, allow them to step out and see, allow them to, 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 to ooh, as God says in Malachi, right? Try me now, prove me now. Just try me. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. But you know what? Start small. If you, if you can't start with a full 10%, tell God, look, I'm going to start with this 20%. I'm going to put this 20% every week. I, I'm going to put this, this $50, not 20%, this not mm -mm, $20. I'm going to put this $20. God, I, I can't figure it in my budget yet, right? I, I didn't put you in my budget, so I'm going to start with $10, $20 a week and watch God. Watch you won't miss that $20. And 
In fact, God will increase it. So then you'll be like, oh, I'm going to try $50. Ooh, I'm, I'm going to try $80. Because the, 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 effort, the reality is many of us, me included, have been experienced so much goodness from God without tithing, right? And there are moments in my past. I didn't tithe and yet God still showed goodness. And so it made me think maybe I don't need to tithe. But the enemy allowed me to get comfortable with grace. Grace says, I'm gonna give you what you don't deserve. So we, we, we got comfortable and lived a Christian life on God's grace. I ain't going to tithe. Other people tithing. But when I began to tithe consistently, I got to experience a level of God's glory that far exceeded God's grace. Woo! God, listen, I'm trying not to run. Listen, grace was good. God loves me. God doesn't want to see me without. But when I became a consistent tither, I got to experience the glory of God. I, I got to experience the fullness of God. I got to experience God in a way. Woo Far beyond what I ever got to experience God when I was quote unquote robbing God. Listen, we, we, we have a great work to do. We have a great assignment to do at the Word of Faith Church. We, we have a great assignment to do. And it's not just the board's assignment. It's not just the leader's assignment. It's not just the pastor's assignment. It's the Word of Faith family's assignment. We need you to survive. We need you. We need you to survive. We can't do it without you. God has given us an amazing opportunity to partner for the purpose of pushing kingdom work. We need you. We need you. That, that's it. There's no shout today. That is the shout. The shout is God is asking us to partner for the purpose. Listen, I, I need you. This is self-assessment time, right? Are you giving God your best? Have you prayed and, and have you experienced the good? Have you experienced the goodness of God and not honored God with a seed or with a tithe? Have you been comfortable surviving on the grace of God, but not trusting enough God enough to really experience the glory of God? This same opportunity that, that God gave to the Israelites today, that God gave in this text today, tell them to bring it. To tell them to bring it so that we may build is the same opportunity we have right now. I'm especially appealing not to the 29 that have been, unless by chance in that 29, there are those who've not given a honest or consistent tie. And they want to stretch themselves. But I'm really appealing to the other. We said, what, 63? So if we said 63, we're going to go with 63. So 63 minus 29, uh, 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 44, mm -mm, 34. I'm, I'm appealing to the other 34. The other 34 who have not tithed or given anything in offering this year. I want us to take a moment right now. I want us to take a moment right now. And I want you to sow something. 
Vanique's going to put the, the giving app, giving options on the screen. And if you haven't given anything this year, I want you to take a minute and give something. And give something. And give something. And while you're giving, I want to pray. Everybody, eyes closed. God, we honor you today. God, we're so thankful as we reassess our response to your release. God, you released wealth to us each week, each month, each pay period. And it's not just monetary wealth, God. You've allowed us to experience some things and, and to, to experience you in ways that are phenomenal. We, we, you, you, we, we, we've seen you raise us from the sick bed. We've seen you uh, find us new jobs. We've seen you allow new family members to be born. We, we've seen you, God, just allow new purchases and new job opportunities to come. God, you've been so faithful to us. God, we apologize for not always being as faithful to you. God, you don't ask for much. But God, we make every excuse not to be able to do it. And so God, we repent for that. We, we apologize for ever second guessing the simple ask you have of us to bring our tithes to the storehouse that there may be meat in your house. So God, we, we promise we, we will do our best to improve our giving, to improve our efforts at kingdom building. And God, we as the leadership, the board and the leaders will, will do our best to steward. And then God, for those leaders that aren't giving, God, touch their hearts especially. For it's hard to lead where you are not willing to go yourself. God, we praise you. God, we honor you. God, we thank you. And for those who are taking the leap of faith to give, God, you know them, protect them. God, replenish them. Allow them to reap in response to their giving. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Let's give God a hand of praise. Listen, listen, this is, this is, for those that know me, probably one of the most difficult topics to talk about for me. I would rather talk about anything else other than money, but it's necessary. And it's necessary that we know how important that it's not by accident that God placed us here, right? That God knew what was needed by us before God placed us, right? God, listen, God knew that it was gonna, that, okay, God knew in Exodus 12, when God released the children of Israel from Egyptian captivity and had the neighbors give them the silver and the cattle, God knew in Exodus 12 that in Exodus 25, God was going to ask for a tabernacle to be made. That's why God didn't allow the cattle and the gold to be washed away in the Red Sea. God allowed it to last through the Red Sea because God knew, even though the people didn't find out till Exodus 35, God already planned it in Exodus 12. It's not by accident. I, I could go farther, but I'm not. I'm going to stop there. God allowed them to be Egyptian captives because of the wealth of Egypt, because God knew that God was going to release them with wealth. God didn't, didn't allow them to be Amalekite captives because there was no wealth there. Okay, okay, listen. So, um, at this time, I want to pause and invite anybody. Uh, if you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, right? If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to, to give your life to Christ, to be saved. And you simply um, just type the word saved in the chat. 
or in the comments, type the word saved. Type the word saved. Here's the second connection point. You can connect to the to back to Christ, right? You you were saved, but you strayed away. You stopped believing, you stopped tithing, you stopped giving, you stopped trusting, you stopped, you started straying away. And you hear God telling you it's time to come back. If that's you, type restore in the chat. Restore. Restore. I see you, Stephanie. Welcome. Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the faith family. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yay. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe that's not you, right? Maybe you, you are saved. Maybe you are restored but you want a church home. And if that's you and you need a place where you can grow in God and be loved on by God, type the word join in the chat to be a part of the faith family, be a part of the faith family. If you type join or save or restore, take out your phone and text the word new faith, all one word, new faith, all one word, to 84576. Text the word new faith, all one word. Text it to 84576. 76. 84576. Yeah, text the word new faith to 84576. Amen, 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 amen. Also, you can need if you need prayer, text all one word, I need prayer to 84576, and our intercessory prayer team will pray for you. I need prayer, all one word, to 84576. And then you can give through contribution, right? We've done that for those, but there's still giving time. There's still time to give all of our platforms, mailing it in, GiveLify, Raise Mobile, website, Place of Faith, Cash App, dropping it in the box. All those ways are possible. All right, all right. Vanique, in the, in the poll section, I think there's a poll called return to sanctuary, drop that poll, activate that poll, launch that poll. You know, we talked about coming back. Our leadership team is meeting Tuesday to discuss coming back. We want to get your feedback on sanctuary return. And there's a poll that's going to enter into the, the chat in just a second. It wouldn't let me do it. All right, while that's taking place, while we're looking for that, <laughs> we're looking for it. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Ah, it's not gonna let me do it. Okay, no worries. It was just on the screen. It was? Yes, sir. Okay, did everybody do it? I didn't even see it. Yeah, it's still up. I have it. I, I'm looking at it now. Okay, if y'all could do that, if y'all see it and do it. Yep, they're answering. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We'll talk about the results of this poll on Tuesday with my uh, servant leaders. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, I thank you. Pastor um, B. Huh? Pastor B. Yes, sir. Um, Sister Stephanie is, is a Longtime friend of ours. Mm 